people believe there is a strong correlation between the amount of fat we consume and our chances of developing cardiovascular disease. CVD refers to conditions that involve narrowed or blocked blood vessels that can lead to a heart attack. It is a common belief that if people avoid products with dietary fat in them, they can be healthier. Because of this belief, Many companies have come out with products that have low-fat labels, which are popular in local grocery markets due to this negative connotation associated with fat. But are all fats actually bad for us? To first understand, we have to go into detail about the different types of fat and how fats are necessary to our normal physiology. Fats are important for numerous functions in our bodies, such as the insulation of our organs, to maintain the fluidity of our cell membranes, and as an energy source. Fat refers to a class of nutrients known as lipids. 95% of the lipids in our food come from fats and oils, and about 99% of lipids in the body are stored as triglycerides in our fat cells. Dietary fats come in two conformations, saturated or unsaturated. Unsaturated fats have the possibility of being polyunsaturated, with multiple double bonds, or monounsaturated, having only one double bond. The more unsaturated the fat, traditionally, the more fluid the fat is at room temperature. Unsaturated fats are typically classified as good fats, as these fats have been shown to help reduce heart disease, lower cholesterol levels, and have other health benefits when they replace saturated fats in the diet. When we consume fats, we often consume cholesterol. Cholesterol is carried in the blood by attaching to proteins called lipoproteins. There are two main forms low-density lipoprotein, LDLs, and high-density lipoproteins, HDLs. LDLs carry the majority of the cholesterol in our bodies and are typically considered the bad type of cholesterol. This is because high levels of LDL particles can invade blood vessels and can cause inflammation. HDLs, on the other hand, are often referred to as good cholesterol because they can absorb cholesterol molecules and carry them back to the liver, which flushes the cholesterol from the body and may reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke. A diet rich in saturated fats can drive up total cholesterol and tip the balance towards more harmful LDL cholesterol, which may prompt blockages to form in arteries in the heart and elsewhere in the body. In a world that is governed by an interest in fat reduction and longevity of life, dietary fat is of immense relevance to our discussion. One of the main symptoms of heart disease is the formation of plaque, where the blockage of the arteries is due to the deposition of LDL. However, the scientific link between the consumption of dietary fat and CVD has not been fully understood. In other words, the reduction of saturated fat and its impact on CVD is rather unclear in the literature. Have you ever been told to replace saturated fat with refined carbohydrates in order to preserve cardiac health? or that you're definitely better off by replacing saturated fat with unsaturated fat. While despite such educated conjectures, the scientific literature is still equivocal on such claims. For instance, and to people's shock, there's no increase in CVD from eating cholesterol-rich foods. The mechanism being that our bodies are able to adapt when dealing with high or above average consumption of cholesterol. Research has found that cholesterol is produced endogenously, whereby our body creates most of it, but most importantly, that we are capable of reducing our internal production, thereby being able to adapt well to an influx of cholesterol that may come from our diet. So in conclusion, cutting back on high-fat diets doesn't decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease, as compared to someone who doesn't. If anything, you're depriving your body from specific roles that fat may play, like insulating your organs or generating ATP through this energy source. However, ingesting fatty foods in excess doesn't equate to a healthy lifestyle either, but a balance between the food groups is recommended by professionals. Use Canada's Food Guide for consulting a physician and or a dietitian for more information on diet plans appropriate for you that could help you better your health in the long run and potentially reduce your risk for cardiovascular disease.